All right, good morning, everybody. Well, we're going to talk about some practical things this morning. Uh, I, I've been talking about all along what hope is and, and, and how it affects us and what we do with it. And I've, I've talked about how our Lord and our relationship with God is the source of true hope, eternal hope. But I've also said I want to balance because there are people out there who don't have that relationship with the Lord. And yes, we want to guide them to that. But they also have some immediate needs and they cannot see the long term because of what's going on immediately. And so in today's lesson, I do want to talk primarily about just some practical things. Well, let's do an interim review. I just want to hit some of the highlights of what we've said so far. Hope is a desire accompanied by expectation or belief of fulfillment. That, that's the textbook, the dictionary definition of hope. I have an expectation and, and I, I, I feel like it's going to happen, whatever that may be, or not happen, as the case may be. And, and uh, the more positive our view, then the more hope we will have of fulfillment. And I said that that view is based on our past experiences Remember, you are what you were when, <laughs> a culmination of life experiences, decisions made. So it's based on our past experience, our current situation as well. And so we combine those together to give us that view of the future. The more positive our background, the more positive our outlook, uh, our view, then the more likely we're going to have a positive view of something. Even if we're faced with what seems to be a hopeless situation, we still are going to be able to find a source of hope. I'll address that in a little bit later. Um, we, and, and we talked about uh, the three stages uh, of hope that we go through. Hope sparked. Now, now again, we, we have people called seekers, those who are seeking something and don't know what's, where to go. But generally, we have hope sparked. That's that little glimmer of hope that's out there that we, we gravitate toward. Um, we have hope sensed. This is a growing sense of confidence as, as we see that hope out there and we move towards it. Our hope begins to grow a little bit. That's hope sensed. Well, maybe this is the right thing or this is a way I need to go. And then hope sparked. This is where we have confidence because we see that it is working. We do see the possibility, the very strong likelihood of, of success or even success in things. All right, uh, let me get into the lesson for today before I run out of all my time. Restoring hope has a lot of the same elements of discovering hope, uh, such as seeking, <clears throat> seeking and understanding and defining what it is and grasping and sustaining hope. Uh, all, all of those that are part of originally finding hope are also parts of restoring hope. Uh, it, it involves restoring belief, restoring trust. And, and this can be very difficult, especially if trust has been violated. Uh, trust is one of those very fragile human interactions. And so um, if it's been lost or whatever, then it's difficult to find it again. Uh, but, but anyway, those are some of the same things. And, and it's also a journey, this, uh, restoring hope is a journey with those same phases that we find ourselves when we're initially seeking hope, the hope sparked, hope sensed, and hope seen. Um, it, it may have elements of repeat, but it's quite likely it could even be a new journey, a new discovery. And it has its own set of challenges. Uh, restoring hope. In fact, some of those challenges may be very strong barriers. I already mentioned restoring hope, also um, restoring trust, uh, those kinds of things. So we, we need to look at that. And, and so it, it's just a fair question. Um, it, how can we restore hope? What is a process we can go through? And when we're faced with the challenging and, and, and threatening situations, it's, it's just easy to want to give up hope. And so I want to talk now about some practical ways. That's where we're going with this. First of all, keep things in perspective. And by the way, these things I'm listing, uh, they're, they're not necessarily my ideas, but I have adapted them. The term is synthesized them into this presentation. 
<clears throat> there's a, there's a, a good body of knowledge out there on this. So in the throes of our, our deep, stressful situation, it's easy to not see things clearly. You see what's happening and you feel what's happening. And that's how I say we've got to keep those things in perspective. Um, sometimes you have to actually take a mental step backwards. You have, to, you have to step backwards and take a deep breath. You may physically take a deep breath and go, okay, relax. Let me think about this. What's really going on? And, and what are they telling me? Listen to what's being said. Look at all those situations, all those inputs, and think about it. So you take that mental step backward. When you do this, by the way, it also helps open up choices that you may have overlooked, options, ideas, suggestions, whatever that you may not have thought about. Um, oncology is not my field of study. I, I'm aware of a lot of things about it, but not at a level of a practitioner. I'm, I'm just kind of aware of them. And so if somebody's telling me this is what's going to happen and this is going to happen, I'm listening and, and, and I'm not afraid to ask questions and or say that again, or here's what I think you said, uh, those kinds of things. So take that step backwards, um, reevaluate the situation. And when you're doing that, reevaluate that situation with the idea of mind of where is my hope? What is the pathway out of this or through this? Again, it may open choices, help us mentally and emotionally. Um, we learn to control our emotions. Uh, we force ourselves to slow down and look at it because things are happening so fast sometimes in stressful situations. <clears throat> and then after that, uh, you know, we review the situation again. We make certain that we understand it clearly. Uh, we, we try to get that fresh look. I have noticed in, in my own life and in situations with others is that when we're seeking hope, sometimes things seem to be in, uh, I forgot the term, quick motion, where, where you just run through it real fast, as opposed to slow motion where you say, slow down, take a look at this. So keep things in perspective. We uh, sometimes don't make good decisions when we make quick decisions. Okay, here we go. Here's another one to do about. Look for positive elements of the situation, even to the point of finding some humor in it. <laughs> Learn to laugh at yourself in situations. Um, I would comment sometimes to Lynn, oh, I sure look pitiful, or <laughs> things like that. Or, or uh, man, I feel like I'm 100 years old on this walker, uh, those kinds of things. But uh, look for situations uh, that are positive in it. Um, Remember, the more positive our view, the greater the hope is that's there. Sometimes finding a positive element can be challenging, but it's worth it. I, I, don't, I don't like to play a pity party. I don't like to sit around and say, ain't it awful, or, or woe is me. I, I want to find what's going on here and, and you know, what, what, what's good about this, uh, those kinds of things. And in this idea of looking for positive elements of the situation, Look for small victories. Uh, David Ramsey uh, in, and other people have as well, but David Ramsey in his financial management program talks about baby steps. That's what I'm talking about. You're looking for something in this environment that's positive and a small victory, and you build those into your foundation, and then you go from there. So again, keep things in perspective. Look for the positive elements of the situation. And I don't mean put on blinders and a Pollyannish view of it, but there are positive things that are going on. Look for creative solutions. I've mentioned a little bit about this, but the concept that the same actions produces the same results is a very real thing. And so um, look for some kind of a uh, creative solution, uh, something that's not been tried. Now, I don't mean do something out of a sense of desperation. But sometimes we'll look at things and we'll say, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Or I've done this in the past and it'll work this time. Not necessarily. And, and so look for a creative thing. What about this is different? What other things can I bring to bear? By the way, when we take that step backwards and slow down a little bit, some of those things will start coming out to us. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean, though, we're taking desperate action. I, I want to be careful about that. 
But uh, if something is not working, then look for an alternative. If something is working, then how can I sustain that? Uh, It's easy to overlook options, though, uh, when we're emotionally involved. And so it's a good idea to have somebody else there that is aware of it and, and knows a little bit about it and can offer things. Remove the things that rob or challenge hope. So whatever it is, remove the things that rob us or challenge our hope. <clears throat> these, uh, these accelerate or spiral into hopelessness. doesn't build hope. It pulls hope away from us, those things that rob us of hope. And we talked about that earlier. A general negativism robs us of hope. So keep positive. Look for hope. Look for th- the positive things that are there. But such things as worry and stress and disbelief or denial, despair, all those other D words that are out there, they're natural. Those are human emotions. We're going to feel them. Don't let them control you. You control them. Uh, The reactions may be natural, but you're in charge. Uh, They just destroy or rob us of hope. I want to give some examples. And you've heard these. You've heard these. I'm not just going to give you the examples. Ah, here it is. Here's some questions or thoughts that you might hear. It won't work. It hasn't worked before. Don't let that rob you of hope. Don't, don't have that mindset. What can I do to remove or make it work? What can I change? Or, or how can I look at this and make it different? So don't, don't sit there and say, well, it won't work. It's never worked before. Uh, there is no one size fits all. You ever notice that? <laughs> so look for it. Don't, don't let that be your mindset. I don't have what it takes. Instead, ask yourself, how can I access what I need? How can I find something out there to help me overcome this, whatever this is? Is there a source I can draw from for what I need? Those are the mindsets. I might fail. You might also succeed. If I don't try, I will fail. If I fail, then I know that doesn't work. I'll try something else. If only I, and then you fill in the blank, try to avoid if statements. They, they, they're not productive in a lot of ways. Yeah, sometimes we say, if I do this, this is going to happen. If I do this, if I stop doing this, this is. But, but try to avoid the if statements, if only. Uh, state instead what you have and what you can do with it. Okay, I'm in this situation. What do I have? Uh, you know, what, what can I draw upon? What, what can I help with this? And then, well, the, the time's just not right. Well, the time may never be right. You got to seize the moment, seize the day. Don't wait for perfect conditions to act. They're, they're just not going to be there. So you seize the moment now. You have your resources available And that's what you're doing. I'm in this situation. What resources do I have? That's what I'm bringing to bear in the battle. But at the same time, I'm also looking to bring other resources in. All right. So those are, those are some things to talk about with, uh, looking for, uh, don't let things rob us of our hope. Okay. Uh, Remove the things that rob or challenge of our hope. And then, uh, Remember what gave us hope. Remember how you felt when you had hope. You now have a goal to go towards, to recapture that feeling of hope. And, and what were the things that brought that hope? What, what can I do to regain that footing underneath me? Um, I, I mentioned about restoring hope has its own set of challenges 
One of the way to help overcome the challenges of restoring hope is, again, to remember what it looked like. And, and so uh, this is very closely tied to that. And it's actually not a challenge as much as it is an advantage. That's why I say we need to think about it. What did it look like when I knew I had hope? And, and so, again, keep that in mind. That gives you a, a, a destination in your journey to hope. So remember what gave us hope. Um, let me move. And it's not unrealistic. It is positive. And, and by the way, that's true physically, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. When, when, when we had hope, what was my state of being physically? What did I feel like? Spiritually, what did I feel like? The, the hope in that relationship, what did that look like? And, and so what can I do now to recapture that? that uh, I, I don't necessarily rank these as anyone more important, but that to me is really important. It's keeping that in mind of what it looked like. That, that just helps. And then I want to talk about developing a plan for hope. I, I mentioned uh, I, I, I look at things in a process. And so even if I don't necessarily have a formal, excuse me, a formal plan, I keep these elements in mind. I also, by the way, talk about we are what we were when we draw on our body of knowledge. Uh, I used to teach management courses and uh, we talked about planning and decision making and all of that. And so this borrows upon that. But I'm putting this in the context of hope, a plan for hope. First of all, and by the way, I think it's a great idea to write this down. In the handout that I have back there, I have these steps and I have room to write it out. So if you know somebody who is challenged with hope, sit down and help them walk through this. Record for them, ask questions of them, help them define the things, be proactive in their life. And say, you know, you, you, there is hope out here, so let's, let's plan on what that's going to do. What are the steps you're going to go through? How, how can I do these things? And so that's why I, I put these down like this. First of all, understand what we want to happen. That's your goal. What is it I want to happen? I want to get well. I want to restore that relationship with my spouse. I, I want to stop living this way because it's leading me into a situation. Um, <laughs> I'm in a mess and I need to get out of this mess. What does that look like? And so we'll understand what we want to happen. It may be more than one thing, but we're, we're looking for something there. So write it down. What do I want to happen? Uh, we gather information. Um, the second part, gathering information. How can you make it happen? And then that third one, set goals to where we can achieve things that move us towards our desired outcome, that restored hope. And we're trying for three things when we're talking about setting goals. We're talking about immediate goals, what, what needs to happen immediately, uh, what needs to happen intermediately, and then what needs to happen long term. And that, that gets into not only a uh, resolution situation, but also in a preventive situation. So immediately, what do I need to happen? If it's in a relational thing, immediately, what do I need to do? I need to stop doing behaviors that are interfering with that relationship. If it's, if it's in something where I'm doing something I ought not to be doing, immediately would be to stop doing what I'm not supposed to be doing. And then intermediate is where you start to build back from where you are. And then long term. Um, you ever been in a situation where you're, you're experiencing something and you'll say, well, I'll never do that again. I know what this feels like and I do not like it. I will not do that again. So you have, you have a step in the way there. And uh, develop and put into motion the processes to achieve your goals. So you're acting on it. Here's, here's what I want to happen. Here's the resources I need. Here's my goals. And now I'm going to implement. I'm going to act upon it. Doesn't do any good to put something, a plan down on paper or in your mind and then not do anything with it. That's just senseless activity. 
So develop and put into motion the processes. Uh, determine a starting point. Uh, it, it, it may not have an end, but it should contain checkpoints along the way. And then evaluate your success. This is something we, we don't think about too much or we don't, we don't think about it in a formal way. But, okay, I've implemented it. Now, what's the results? Am I seeing what I wanted to see? Is something changing? It may not be immediate change, but is there some changes that are happening? And there may be ups and downs, but is the tendency, the trend, is our friend, is the ex expression there, are we moving in the trajectory that we want? So evaluate your successes or evaluate your failures. And, and then uh, redirect if you need to or sustain that activity. That's just a critical step. You, you don't know if you're being successful if you don't evaluate. You've got, that's why I say it's valuable to write it down. Here's what I wanted to do. Okay, it's not working. I go back and go through that process again. When we do this, we have a better opportunity to restore hope. Uh, if, otherwise, if, if we're just relying on events and, and uh, the situation, uh, it, it's not going to get better by itself most of the time. There's, there's going to be problems. Okay. I said I, said I have a balance between practical and, and spiritual or whatever. To me, spiritual is practical, but to other people in the world, it may not be. To us, we understand the integration of practicality and spirituality. But I do want to talk about the ultimate way to restore hope. I have said that hope, true hope, eternal hope is in our Lord. And we understand that, but not everybody does. And so there's, there's two critical moments in man's history by illustration where we were faced with a... a seemingly hopeless situation but our Lord was there and it was not a hopeless situation and you're familiar with Genesis 3 this is our, the first sin when Adam and Eve uh, sinned eating of the forbidden fruit uh, disobeying God they ate of the fruit of the tree of um, knowledge of good and evil and as a result that close intimate relationship with the Lord was removed. In, in the book on hope, when I talk about this, I, I, I draw the image in mind. Put yourself in Adam and Eve's place that first night. They've been driven out of the garden. They're cold. The dew and of the evening is upon them. All they have are these animal skins that probably provide, I don't know, minimal cover. It wasn't a warm blanket full covering. It's dark. They're hearing animal noises that are not friendly noises. I'm speculating. I'm just putting myself into that mindset. And, and they know that they're not in that perfect environment that God had created for mankind. And they cannot turn to the Lord and be there with him. The Lord was there, yes, absolutely, and, and probably did some communicating. But that's what it feels like when you're outside of hope. You, you just have that sense of loneliness and threat, and everything is going against you, and you are cold and, and terror-ridden and, and unsure. Fear is a very real thing. And so, again, that, that's some of the things that I speculate they might have felt. And so they attempted to hide themselves from God because of their sin and their, their shame. Um, our Lord passed judgment on them, drove them out of the garden. Most of all, and this is a key point, most of all, that relationship with the Lord was now destroyed. It had to be restored, and it had Our Lord had to restore it. Adam and Eve could not restore it. And, and so the Lord, our Father, did not leave them without hope. The next one is during the mission of Christ. There's so, so many tie-ins, bookends. 
Uh, because of man's sin, Jesus suffered death and worst of all, separation from God. Um, in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, uh, we, we read where uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and, and um, was God. All things were created by and through him, all of that. And so there's this inseparable relationship there. But um, our Lord willingly separated himself from God, came to earth to endure what he did for us. And so we read about the sacrifice of our Lord, and then we hear that cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I, I, I can hear Adam and Eve saying that, oh, my God, my God, why am I experiencing this? Why, where are you? So I see that, I feel that relationship between those two. Uh, for the first time in eternity, our Lord was separated from God the Father. But the separation and death were necessary to bring us back. And so here's the main point. Uh, we have to have a restored relationship with God. Remember I said the only time there is no hope is when we give up hope. Hope is there. It may not be in the form that we think it is. So, yes, this life is going to end. But it doesn't have to mean the end of hope eternal. And so sometimes I'm in a situation where there may, in fact, be no hope of this being sustained. That doesn't mean that's the only kind of hope out there. And maybe that's the time... We should have been doing it before, but sometimes we have to redirect our view and find hope in a different way or a different image of hope or understanding of hope. <clears throat> so when we are in that restored relationship with God, we have hope. Uh, God asks us to believe and accept Jesus as the Son of God. We redirect our life to committing to our Lord and his teachings as our King and Savior. That's that repentance part. We're then immersed in, in water with baptism uh, to become part of Christ. And then we try to live faithfully. And so that restores true hope, both in the initial sense of, of now we are in the family of God. But there's also in 1 John chapter 1, if we are in that relationship with the Lord and we've sinned, we can come back to our Lord. So it's there. I'll move on to that. Thank you.